We often train for success, regardless of the type of drill. Today we're going to look at not only a low frequency, high risk type of incident, but how to rescue one of our own when things go bad. This is the Basement Rescue Prop. As with all basement rescues, many things will be occurring simultaneously. The crew assigned to removing a firefighter that has fallen below grade has perhaps the most daunting task. Careful attention must be made as to not have too many people crowding the opening. In this evolution, rescuer one will get in place with the charged hose line. This rescuer has two tasks. The first is to insert the nozzle into the opening and use it to protect the firefighter in need of rescue. Inserting the nozzle and hose into the opening also serves to create a friction point. The other task is to act as the anchor of the operation. This rescuer must lie on the portion of hose nearest the nozzle to create friction between themselves and the ground. They also create friction by placing their left boot in the bite. If additional leverage is needed, they might need to resort to lying on the whole bite underneath them. Additional rescuers number two and number three lower another bite into the opening. The down firefighter straddles the hose line and faces away from the anchor rescuer. Rescuers two and three work from opposing sides of the hose line and pull the down firefighter to safety. It is imperative that they communicate when they are pulling and resetting. If they are not working in unison, the down firefighter may fall back into the hole. If available, an additional rescuer can help in securing the down firefighter once they approach the opening. As with all of these evolutions, safety is our biggest concern. Proper lifting techniques should always be utilized while training. In the event of a true below-grade rescue, certain techniques might not be an option. In this evolution, a drop bag is used to effect a rescue. Rescuer 1 keeps the clip end of the rope above grade and pulls about 5 to 6 pulls of rope, creating a bite. This bite is lowered to the down firefighter. Once it is lowered, another 5 to 6 pulls are made, with special attention to keep it out of the hole until needed. All pulls are to remain in front of all rescuers. Failure to do so could accidentally pull a rescuer towards the hole. The down firefighter takes the bite and inserts it under their SCBA harness at the chest level. They continue the bite down towards their leg on the same side and step through it. Once the down firefighter takes the slack out of the line, there should appear to be a rough version of one half of a harness. The topside rescuer lowers the second bite with careful attention to keep the topside bite with them. This creates four sections of rope by which rescuers will pull the firefighter to safety. Once the down firefighter is in the opening, the rescuers to the rear should attempt to walk forward, enveloping the firefighter to the opening. This portion is similar to the one used with the firefighter rapid extraction device. Firefighter rapid extraction device. This piece of equipment will be issued to every quint and truck company in the Los Angeles County Fire Department. The device should be stored in the rick bags. Simply put, all four ends of the device are designed to remain above the hole. Lowering the midpoint will create an X on the basement floor. The down firefighter steps over the X and should have two straps in front and two behind them. The rescue team lifts until the down firefighter is near the opening, at which point the rescuers behind the firefighter will move forward and envelop them to the ledge. This will help secure the extracted firefighter and make it easier for rescuers to initiate a pickoff. This evolution can be used for either a conscious or unconscious firefighter. The conscious firefighter. In either case, it is imperative that the ladder is tied off at the tip. This will allow rescuers to maintain contact with the ladder regardless of how the rescue plays out. After the ladder is tied off, it is lowered into the hole. 
Careful attention is paid when assisting the firefighter up through the opening. As expected, the rescued firefighter will be taxed both emotionally and physically. Having too many rescuers too close to the hole can potentially complicate matters and should be avoided. Remember, extinguishing the fire will undoubtedly make an immense impact on the survivability of the downed firefighter and should not be overlooked. This evolution can be used for either a conscious or unconscious firefighter. In either case, it is imperative that the ladder is tied off at the tip. This will allow rescuers to maintain contact with the ladder regardless of how the rescue plays out. The unconscious firefighter. As with the other attic ladder evolution, the ladder must be tied off. Although it takes a few seconds longer, tying it off as shown will pay huge dividends. Once the ladder is tied off, Rescuer 1 and the captain will descend into the hole. The idea is to lash the ladder to the down firefighter, not the other way around. Place the down firefighter on their side. Then, as previously taught during the low and reduced profile drill, loosen the waist straps on the SCBA. Next, run either end of the waist strap between the firefighter's legs and through a rung. This will prevent the firefighter from sliding down the ladder too far. Secure the upper torso by running a hose strap through the firefighter's BA chest straps and secure to a rung. If the firefighter is able to hang on by themselves, this step can possibly be omitted. By properly tying off the ladder, the topside team should have four pulling points on the rope. In unison, the topside team raises the ladder while the rescuers below grade lift from the beams of the ladder. A fulcrum will be created which will assist in removing the down firefighter. This evolution is not complete until the firefighters in the basement are safely removed. A secondary plan must be in the works while the primary plan is underway. Using the same attic ladder is not advised since the Mayday firefighter will demand so much attention. Although the evolution is potentially time consuming, this rescue technique works well for an injured firefighter or an unconscious firefighter. Basement fires, or any other below-grade occupancy fire, can be very complex, and like all fires, no two are exactly the same. The same is true when things turn bad during a basement fire. Like everything in our fire ground survival program, we will train for a failure component. The idea is not to necessarily predict how things will go, but better prepare ourselves so we are ready when they do not go as planned. Now let's go out there and train. <laughs>